In this video, I want to talk about how to download your green button interval data if you live in California. Hey, it's Jamie Green, the Solar Queen. In this video, I want to talk about how to download your green button interval data if you live in California. And in this example, I live in pg e territory, so I'm, gonna, I'm inside my pg e account. I'm going to show you how to navigate, where to find usage, how to download PDFs of your utility bill, and the green button data. If you live in Southern California, Edison, or SDGE territory, it's going to be very similar. I'm going to show you our account so you can see where to find this information so that when you're preparing for your solar consultation, you have all the information. Of course, I would love it if you worked with me. I'm gonna put all of my links in the description below, including a video that I did recently on whether or not you should lease or purchase your system because it matters right now in this day and age with where interest rates are at, the cost to borrow money, um, inflation and everything. So I have opinions on it. It has changed throughout the years and where I'm at with it now you can go and watch that video. Make sure if you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing to subscribe to the channel. If you're watching and you keep coming back and you haven't subscribed yet, I love it if you subscribe to the channel and give it some love. Let me know what you think in the comments too because I always read them and I try and respond to them and it helps me with more video ideas for you guys so it serves you the best. So here is inside the dashboard of my pg e account. Um, you can see that we have a balance of $36.48, and I bet you haven't seen a bill like that in a long time. This is because we have solar on our house. This is for our connection fee, which is $11, $10.58 or $0.48. Cents. And then we have gas on top of that. So you can see solar works very well for us. This, we're under NIM 2.0, so when we go in and look at some of this information, it's going to look a little bit differently, but I'm going to try and um, make it so it makes sense to you guys that don't have solar yet and are looking at NEM 3.0. When I, or whoever you're working with, asks you to download your most current utility bill, you're going to do it right here. You're going to view current utility bill, you're going to download it. The purpose of this video is really to show you where to get your uh, interval data. This here is energy usage data details, and this is where you're going to find your interval data, green button data with PG&E. SCE, SDGE, it's going to be very similar. You'll be able to find it, and I'm going to show you how to download it. There's two different things you want to download. So let's click into here. These are different things you can toggle through and see, but right now this is just electricity. This is for the month so far from October 25th to November 25th or November 23rd. As we, you can see, we still have a lot of time left. These blue bars, this, these are the days that I was um, charging my car. But because we're in NEM 2.0, we're importing, exporting. Right now, this is a net zero, which is why when you looked at our bill from last month, we were producing enough energy. We were drawing from the energy. We have a very small... Like we can go back here and look. Look, it's pretty even keel. So this is one of those months where pretty close to net zero. Let me show you what it looks like for a yearly view so you can see what it lo looks like with solar. The green means exporting, blue means importing. Our true up is every March. And so right around here, this is where we settle up with the utility company. That is under NEM 2.0. You'll see a lot of production here because when we got our second solar system, if you've been following my YouTube channel, you've heard me talk a lot about the decisions that we made along the way. I didn't want to add any more solar or storage. So it was a second system that we were installing because we got an electric vehicle. But I did size it so that if my husband does decide to get an EV, another EV, or if we decide to do a hot tub or something, we had plenty of extra energy to accommodate that and still not owe the utility company. That's like the goal. When you don't have solar, you're just gonna see a lot of blue bars. And you can see, if you hover over it, it used to be that we could just go hover over all your, uh, your bars and tell me what your energy usage was, and that was enough for NEM 2.0 to design a system. That's no longer the case. You need to download this green button data. I want to show you one other thing too. For people who are interested in knowing how much energy they're using during peak time of day, this is what 
we were doing from 4 p.m. until 11 p.m. We were doing laundry, <laughs> mini loads. We were running the dishwasher, we are doing all the things. This is fine under NEM 2.0 and it's gonna be fine with NEM 3.0. The thing is, is you need enough storage to cover the, the energy consumption on a daily basis. So rather than going through and you know going back one day after a day, like you can see, we exported a lot of energy here. We were not doing laundry here. So we this is a big export day. You don't want to do go, you know, day after day after day. So this is where this green button data is so important. So if you click on it, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up another screen. The first thing you're going to do, you're going to down pull, do two downloads and you're going to go ahead and keep it in CSV. Go ahead and export this. What this is going to export, it's going to download this information. You go here and this is what you want to do. Export usage for a range of dates. You're going to click on this. Again, you're going to keep it as a CSV and you're going to go back a year. So go ahead and like here, I'm going to just back it up and go 11. 06, 2022, and so you're going to export it. And this is what it's going to export again into a zip file. When you go to your downloads, it's going to open up a file. It's going to have two files, probably a gas and electric, at least with PG&E. SE, it's just going to be electric. SCGE is probably going to be gas and electric, but we only want the electric interval data. I am in the interval data. This is, as you can see, it's from 11-6-2022, right here, all the way to 11-6-2023. So this is a lot of data. The reason for this, and mine is not the best example. I could use someone else's, but I don't want to do that. I want to use mine so you can see. But I want to show you the reasoning behind why we need this interval data. The sun starts setting and so solar production stops starts dropping off now around 4 p.m. Here we are. Let's go all the way until 9 a.m. the next morning. That's 1.19 kilowatt hours. We may not have been home. I can't remember if we were home or not, but let's go here in December. So here we are in December. Again, I'm going to start around 4 p.m. Let's go ahead and use, this is a good example. Um, only because you can see some usage that might be similar to what you use, but I know I'm charging my car here. 4 p.m., we are starting to pull energy. We're starting to use energy. Um, and the reason why I pick four is because that's kind of when the sun goes down. Sun production, sun production drops off. And we're going to go until 9 a.m. the next day when usually the sun is starting to produce, which you can see here, 28 kilowatt hours used from sunset to sunrise. Um, so you would need at least two Tesla power walls, which is gonna give you roughly 26 kilowatt hours. And you'd be buying two kilowatt hours from the grid, which is far better than buying 28 kilowatt hours from the grid. With NEM 3.0, the whole premise is when the sun goes down and your system stops producing, that's it you're gonna be buying all your energy from the grid and you don't wanna do that anymore. You want it, your system to be producing for you in real time what you need, but then excess energy, you wanna store it in your battery because if you export it to the grid like we are doing, you're not gonna get the credits like we get under NEM 2.0. You're gonna get like pennies and you don't want pennies, even though it's still something. The point being is when you're buying from the grid, it's, you're going to true up monthly, like you're going to pay this out monthly. Your annual true up then becomes what was the excess produced in, in a year's time. This is why this is really important to gather the interval data. What I typically do is I'll add it all up and keep track of tally of all the data for you so that we make sure we get you enough storage. So this is what we would be doing, going to every single month and just polling data. So here we go. Let's use this one as March. So in March, um, we'll go to here. 24 kilowatt hours is how much we use. This is because we I was charging the car. This is, again, realistic for so many people. It really is. How many months are we using more than, say, 13 kilowatt hours? Um, 13 to 26 to, to um, 39, I guess it is. 
that we need to look at so we get you the right amount of storage. And then we need to make sure we have a big enough solar system to power up all those batteries for you on a daily basis. Now I wanna tell you, in the winter time, the solar production drops off. And so it is possible that you don't, you even with your system sized properly for you for most of the year, there, like as you saw, there's two months out of the year where we're really pulling from the grid. You may have a true up, even with the right as much solar as you need, can get and storage, there's still a likelihood you're going to have a true up with NEM 3.0 during the winter months. And I would say November to February at least. And it's still going to be better than what having 100% true up all the time if you don't have solar and storage under NEM 3.0. I hope that this video was really helpful for you to understand storage, um, how much storage that we need to calculate for you uh, to cover you from the time the sun sets to the time the sun rises again so that you are reducing um, the amount of money that you're paying to the utility company. I'm Jamie Green, the Solar Queen. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. I know I talked a lot, we went through data, but this is all stuff that you should already know or be at least aware of so that when you're meeting with your solar representative, hopefully it's me, you can go to jamiegreenthesolarqueen.com and schedule an appointment with me. Then at least we're on the same page talking about your home, your information, when it comes to your energy usage and how you use it. I want you to have the best setup when it comes to your your solar system size, and your storage. And what I'm finding when I'm modeling out solar proposals for people under NEM 3.0, there's a sweet spot in oversizing the system between 115 to 135, 138% offset with storage because it lifts the production in the wintertime um, giving you a little bit more energy produced in the wintertime, giving you a little bit more energy to be stored up into the batteries to carry you through so that your true up in those months are less. Because when I model it out over 25 years, it's still better to size up the system, pay a little bit more for the system rather than being exposed to true ups for, um, um, for 25 years, because as you know, rates continue to climb and they're not going to, they're not going to decrease the rates per kilowatt hour any time soon. I've not ever seen it happen. In fact, they've announced that they're going to, your rates are going up and they're hoping to get it passed with the CPUC in January and start raising your rates even more for the next three years. That would be guaranteed that they can do that. You don't want to have ex you don't want to have a true up and then have you know this that whatever's not covered by solar. It's those true ups getting more and more expensive over time. So I've been modeling it out. I've been helping people understand what it's going to look like. The truth is, is you're going to have a true up bill even with solar and storage, even with oversizing. You're going to have a small one during those winter time months. And I hope that that makes sense to you. And if not, we will hop on a Zoom, we'll talk about it, we'll show you, I'll show you the graphs and, and everything that is specific to your home. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.